I'm the chairman and the founder of Daimir Merkel, and I'm so proud and so glad to be here, and th thank you so much for, for listening. Uh, I'll take this little thing here. Uh, these are th some of the guys that work in the company, and really our CEO, Ulf Hanelius, he's much better than <laughs> at doing presentations that I am, but he's in Toronto talking about diabetes, and so he sent me down here, and I'm very glad, of course, that he did that, and it's, it's fun. And uh, this is our disclaimer. Uh, coming back to the story of Diamid, uh, I'd like to start with just explaining a little bit, you probably know it already, what is type 1 diabetes. And today, type 1 diabetes starts, it's a progressing disease. It starts with stage 1, it goes over to stage 2, it goes over to stage 3, which is, is the insulin requiring phase of the disease. And stage one is when you have two antibodies, two beta cell produce, uh, insulin producing beta cells. Uh, insulin is produced by the beta cells in, in the body. And when you have antibodies to these beta cells, you have an autoimmune disease, uh, type one diabetes, that when you have at least two antibodies. The patient doesn't know that he has type one diabetes because he doesn't need insulin, and the blood sugar levels are pretty normal. Uh, the, pr the disease progresses, however, to stage 2 type 1 diabetes, and that is when you still have the two antibodies normally to GAD and insulin, and, um, and uh, the blood sugar starts to sort of uh, get abnormal, especially after meals and also du during meals. So the patient doesn't st still know that he has type 1 diabetes, stage 2. So he goes on, although he has abnormal blood sugar values. Then, as the disease progresses, and the beta cells get more and more, um, how to say, uh, when they, when they, when they when you get less and less beta cells, uh, they can't produce enough insulin, and the patient ends up acutely at, uh, at the hospital, and, and he, he gets or she gets insulin, in, uh, every day from, from that day on for the rest of his life to sustain life, otherwise the patient dies. So what we are doing, um, we are trying to induce tolerance to the autoimmunity. That is, um, the antibodies is a sign that there is an autoimmune process ongoing to the beta cell producing uh, insulin-producing beta cells, and we want to induce tolerance to that. So we found, when my daughter got uh, diabetes in the 90s, uh, we talked to several uh, leading KOLs, and they all believed in a, in a molecule called GAD, and we had uh, this uh, professor, Hans Wixell, who was uh, a professor in immunology, and also uh, Chad uh, Karolinska at, in Stockholm, and he suggested that we should give sub subcutaneously a prime and a dose and see if we could induce tolerance to, to GAD and, therefore, and thereby sort of uh, induce tolerance and get rid of the autoimmunity. And so we did, and we did phase one, phase two, phase three, phase three with, uh, together with uh, Johnson & Johnson. We did s rather good results, but they were not significant, and we didn't, know and we didn't understand why. Then we sort of looked at how do you treat allergen, and there were, there were research going on where you could give um, allergen three times intralymphatic instead of, intra, I instead of subcutaneously. And if you give it uh, intralymphatic, you could reduce the number of injections to maybe only three, and, uh, and with uh, very small volumes of uh, active product ingredient. So we did that. And we did a phase one, and we did a phase two, and at the same time, we sort of looked back at all the data, all the thousand patients that we had, and uh, we found that uh, our drug worked in, a pa in patients that had a certain gene, DR3DQ2. Uh, and that's amazing. I mean, 40% of the type 1 diabetes patients have this gene, DR3, DRQ, more or less 
40%, in, in, at least in the US and Europe. And then there is another major gene that is uh, DR4-DQ8, and they are more sort of insulin antibody uh, driven, that disease. So what we did then was to, to file patents for intralymphatic injections and for treating the uh, DR3-DQ2, and we started a phase three study, and we are right now recruiting in eight European countries and the States at 60 sites. And uh, we believe that uh, this, uh, the 300 will be, we already recruited, yeah, we, we think it will be ready recruited. We're fully, fully recruited next year. So that's fantastic. And also this is, it's not only us, we have a number of uh, scientific papers showing that we are on the right track. I mean, there are so much data now saying that if you have DR3, DQ2, that's a haplotype, that's a certain gene that sort of take, if, you, if they see an antigen, the haplotype molecule sort of catches it and presents it to T cells. And, uh, and uh, with, uh, with our, this haplotype and our, our molecule, you induce uh, use, uh, a tolerance to T cells. Uh, so then it's interesting to see that there is a company called Prevention Bio that was uh, acquired a year ago by Sanofi. And uh, they, it was acquired for $2.9 billion. And they, one year ago, they succeeded in preventing um, type 1 diabetes from becoming stage 3 insulin requiring. So they, they gave uh, this uh, sealed uh, anti-CD3 uh, antibody to, uh, to type 1 diabetes that was in stage 2, that, was not, that were not really re already insulin requiring. And they could stop the, the insulin requiring phase from, from sort of coming. And uh, so they got approval for that one year ago, and they charged $196,000 per treatment. And the treatment is that you sort of stay in a hospital for 14 days and you get into uh, a venous injection of this uh, anti CD3 antibody. Uh, so it's a, a pretty tough treatment, and you also sort of really suppress your immune system totally. You get rid of your T cells. Uh, which opens up the possibility to get a lot of side effects. And uh, so that's pretty, you know, people think that that is rather, could be dangerous. So it's not something that you really want to do. And uh, what they have done recently, they have also shown that uh, they could um, prevent beta cells uh, sur survival in those patients who already have um, insulin requiring pay, uh, type 1 diabetes. And uh, they do that by giving this uh, anti-CD3 antibody intravenously twice in two 12-day courses. So if one course, 14 days, cost $194,000, a, a two-course um, treatment, two times 12 days, may cost $300. We don't know that yet, but that's possible. So it's very expensive. So if we look, how does that compare to us? When we do, uh, uh, we do a lot of, uh, of course, talks to Big Pharma and uh, other people about our drug and our, our medicine. And uh, uh, th they require a lot of data, of course. So we did go out to uh, a good uh, uh, consultant organization in the States and to try and estimate how much value would the uh, US health society uh, say that it's worth to have our drug uh, to, uh, for treatment, uh, our drug for treatment. And they came up with a, a figure between 65 and $100,000. So I put $80,000 here. And uh, in the States and, and, and Europe, there is 50,000 new onset patients with this uh, molecule with this uh, gene, DR3-DQ2, that present with, uh, with insulin-requiring diabetes every year. So if you 
multiply the 50,000 with 80,000, you get to um, um, an addressable market to, 50, uh, to $4 billion dollars just for that. And then you have the stage one and two um, diabetes, that is before you have the, the open insulin requiring uh, sort of type one diabetes, which should add more than $4 billion to, uh, to the uh, market potential. You have um, an autoimmune disease called LADA, which is uh, type 2 diabetes. Of, of the many type 2 diabetes patients, 10% are said to be misdiagnosed. They have like antibodies to GAD or insulin. So 40% of them also should respond to this uh, drug that we have. And then uh, what we have done very recently is that if you give additional boosters, we gave uh, boosters at, at year th after three years and after four years. It's a very, very small study, but we could show that you prevent your b those, those beta cells that you have at that time. After three or four years, you, s you can save even those. So uh, what uh, remains there is, of course, to define the right regimen for a booster uh, for boosters, that, that could be once every year, or we don't know that for sure. But we know that boosters will help also. And then, of course, last stage is that once we have stopped uh, autoimmunity, then we have to regenerate the beta cells to, to cure the patients. And that might be done by nature itself, by stem cells, or by GABA, or something else. So that is really the story behind the company. So thank you very much. Thank you so much, Anders. Very nice. <laughs> thank you. We have time for a couple of questions. You have um, chosen to take the candidate through phase three yourselves, which is not entirely common in, in the landscape of life science uh, of small and pharmaceutical companies. What was the reasoning here? Well, it was uh, just that we saw that it worked. And we had the possibility. So, I mean, we did it twice. First, we, you know, in 2010, we took it to, to phase three. And then, at the same time, we negotiated with some of the big companies. And J&J, and &J, they sort of uh, ended up, we ended up in a partnership with them. And then, when we didn't reach significance, uh, so we got the technology back. And we restarted with this intralymphatic sort of... Uh, um, injections and then we found out that it worked in this in this uh, genetic subgroup so uh, and then we were on our way we couldn't stop so <laughs> so if we look ahead a bit what value adding milestones do you hope to achieve in in the coming years say milestone in the coming years yep. i mean first we need to recruit so there will be some recruitment milestones i guess we have uh, I think it, we haven't communicated how many we already have recruited, so I won't say that. But, you know, we are recruiting now at full speed. And uh, then we hope to have some kind of interim an analysis. We don't know exactly what type, but... And then we have... Um, well. And you're also conducting a second study called Diagnote B. Can you tell us a little bit about oh, that study? That was, uh, that was the one that I... Uh, very shortly yep. touched on. We, uh, that's a very small study where we could show that if you give boosters you know, on top of the three injections that you give, we could save beta cells even eight years after the first injection. And as a final question then, you are conducting a rights issue at the moment. Yes. What are your best arguments for people to participate in this rights well, issue? Uh, <laughs> I don't know, <laughs> <laughs> to make some money. <laughs> and, and to help. And to help, help type 1 diabetes. Yes, absolutely. Yes. That's a very noble cause. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much, okay. Anders, for your presentation. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye -bye. Thank you. <laughs>